Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Building Subtext. Today, I want to go over The Holdovers, which I finally saw. It's a great film. Loved it. Very cool. Nobody had a cell phone. It was amazing. All right. So I just wanted to show what it looks like in subtext and also how I was able to get the story form so that you can get an idea of maybe how to do it in your own stories or if you're looking at something else, if you're trying to find out what the actual story form is, how we go about doing it. So the very first thing, which was super clear to me, <laughs> was the main character, Paul, Han Paul Giamatti's character. So this is, I've already built it in subtext. So maybe what I should do is show you how I went about building it first. So this is Story Central, and I'm going to go to the Premise Builder, and this is where you can build out the story, putting all the different thematic elements into place so that then you can get to the actual narrative structure. So the idea is I'm going to choose a bunch of things in here, and then once I'm done, it's going to build this thing called a story form, which is a collection of thematic elements that are all tied together, that are all balanced together into this thing here. So what I started with, or what was super obvious to me while I was even watching it, because usually I, I watch it and I try not to get too involved in the story structure till afterwards, is the idea that Paul is, oops, put Paul, hold on a second. Paul is here in mind. So in other words, his personal issue, is he's got a really bad attitude. He's very acerbic, very cranky almost Scrooge. And in order to balance out the narrative, that would mean his obstacle character, the person that challenges him with a different way of seeing things, is going to be over in this other domain universe, which fits Angus perfectly because he's separated from his father. They both are similar in that they're both, I mean, they both have a shared history. So that's that you and I are both alike sort of thing. And then also, I think they're both on antidepressants Librium, which I guess is what was being taken in 70 or 71. So that's the challenge there, which fits really nicely. And then the other thing is that you can confirm it is Paul eventually changes his resolve. He grows out of, he's a completely different person by the end than he was at the beginning, at least the way that he's going to go about solving things. So when you change, when the main character changes out of where their central conflict is, they always move into the one that's diagonally opposite. So what that means is he's moving away from his bad attitude into going traveling, going to a different place in the universe, fixed external place. He's moving out. So that's where he's going here towards the end. And then the other two through lines that balance out the story are the objective story and the relationship story. So that would be the plot and then the relationship between the two of them, which is that teacher student where they look like they're going to cry at the end when they're saying goodbye. And that again is also flipped here. Oh, is that not going to work? Sometimes it doesn't work. You just have to reload it, unplug it, plug it back in and then do that. <laughs> so what it does is subtext always makes sure that the main character and the obstacle character through lines are diametrically opposed because it creates the most conflict. And then also the objective story, the plot, and the relationship story. So that was what was going on there. So definitely Paul is here in the lower right in mind with a bad attitude. Angus is up here in the left. Their relationship is 100% physics, chasing each other around the school, going on the adventure to Boston, all that kind of stuff is they grow by virtue of the things that they're doing together. And then the plot, which also involves, oh, I'm going to blank on her name now, is Mary, right, the cook that's there in town. She is also part of the objective story plot. Obviously, all the kids are there as well. So where the heck is it? There it is. So you're dealing with dysfunctional psychologies. So everybody in the story, the plot, the kids that are there for that short time, the manipulations that are going on, it's all by virtue of problematic ways of thinking and whether or not they can get through it. What I did when I named the 
objective story is this idea of managing that hangover of arrested development. Because I read somewhere, I'm not sure where, but that this was 1970 and this was like the hangover of America. And I thought that was really good, especially with all the drinking that goes on in it and giving Alexander Payne's history of movies about drinking and just the fact that they're all in this state of not being able to transform into the next version of themselves or they're like hanging out purgatory trying to get through there. So these are those four through lines here. And I thought that one worked really well when we look at the objective story here. In particular, you'll see this becoming, which is whether or not they are able to transform. That's a goal of the story. And because you have the objective story and the main character here next to each other, that means the main character is going to grow by getting rid of something. They're going to feel like they have a huge chip on their shoulder which is totally describes Paul. So this felt really great to me. And the, then, so now you have the personality at the top. If you want to get the complete story form, you do the thing over here on the right, which is to figure out what are the core pivotal elements? What's the core argument between the obstacle character and the main character? And that to me was like the easiest thing in the world <laughs> to decipher, which was conscience and temptation. So the idea being that Paul is completely representing conscience in the story. And I thought this summary was great. Paul Hunham champions strict moral beliefs as essential to integrity. Clashing with modern academia is evolving values, a conflict that challenges him to reconcile firm principles with the need for flexibility. So he's very much all about conscience. And then on the other side is Angus. He's got the adult magazines, all that stuff. Angus Tully's rebellious provocations against Paul's strict regime serve as a strategic challenge to authority, exposing its flaws and pushing for change amidst personal struggles. So this is the core of their argument. So when you have the top, you have this personality here, the genre, just this more heavier, more on the drama side than the comedy side. And then you get the very bottom of everything in character where they're the core argument between the two of them. Then everything else basically falls into place. The only question I had was whether or not it was being driven by actions or driven by decisions. I actually went with decision because the decision to keep him over and then the decision to fire him at the end. And then I think the decision to go to Boston are some of the major plot points. The idea being that in a cohesive narrative, all the major plot points will be one of these two types. Definitely about the what would you call it? Male mental sex problem and solution. He's completely obsessed with the linearity and this is what I believe and there's nothing else that's very possible and the world's changing and it's all their problem. It's not me, that kind of stuff. He's not seeing the totality of it. He's very much like, I'm a very principled person and it's those principles that are causing issues with him. He does abandon that at the end. So you can see his arc here in the upper right. Harry, or Harry, Paul arcs from being someone completely driven by conscience to eventually lying and giving into temptation there at the end. And then to help balance that out because of everything else, where everything else is set up, then that would mean Angus would be on this axis where he's driven to help people out all the time and that he's there lying with him, always trying to help everybody make his dad feel better. It's just really sweet. Really nice person. So you get all that. And then the last decision in order to finally lock the story form into place is the idea of whether or not Paul at the end is in a much better place. Like it was really good that he's there and he resolved a lot of his issues. Or if he's still in this state of arrest himself personally. And there's definitely a bittersweet feeling to it. I think somewhere in here it talks about a personal tragedy, which also indicates this idea of the combination of a successfully resolved plot. So everybody does transform and change. Mary is able to grow past it. Angus is able to grow past the weekend and get on better footing with his parents. And also Paul himself transforms, right, from an objective point of view. But I still think it's bad. I watched it again just to make sure, but just this bleak 
sort of ending, which is also very Alexander Painish, where you have that that ending that is a little more bleaker, a little more it's dark, not dark, but it's a little more things aren't quite worked out. He spits out the alcohol, but it's not like he's super happy. And even the music is a little kind of 1970s ish. So I went ahead and I built that. And then that's what got me this. So I really like this. I think it's a fantastic understanding of the story form here. Up at the very top would be the premise. So the premise here in subtext is a way of distilling down all of these story points into an understanding of what is the story form arguing. And it said, despite the grim outlook, the moment you let go of being overly concerned with judging a group, you open the door towards becoming a better version of yourself. And I like that. That's not exactly what I would have put in there, but it's a combination of character, the element focusing on conscience, doing the right thing, acting on one's conscience, and then that plot element of becoming, of transforming and maturing. And then it explained it here in subtext what that all means in terms of if you were building it on your own. And then down at the bottom, I thought this was really great too as well, was the argument that conscience versus temptation argument that's going on there again he's acting on his he's being driven by conscience and one of the versions of looking at that is acting on one's moral beliefs and then looking at angus here being baited or always being driven towards temptation and what that's like paul is arguing conscience is the way to go and then angus is acting no temptation and the way that i got all this stuff is i knew temptation was there and i just found the right one that worked for Angus and then opened up the brainstorming AI here in subtext. I could have thrown in ideas, but I just went ahead and tapped it again and it'll just go ahead and take this and work it with what it knows, what the through line is all about and then help describe what it is. And then I just added that in there. It's pretty much the same. It's a little bit different. And then the only other thing I did was the four through lines here, which are listed out here. I just went ahead and took, I just took the synopsis of it and fed it into Muse. And I just said, can you look at the following and then write a paragraph illustration for each of the four through lines? And I just identified Paul is the MC. It probably would have guessed who that was, but I just wanted to say Paul is the MC. Angus is the obstacle character. Teacher student is the relationship story. And the OS is about everyone in a state of arrested development. So it ran through that and then organized it into those four through lines and then all i did was then just put that into here split those out into those four through lines to help understand it and then go ahead and summarize that into a blending of the four through lines so if it was your own story you just do the same exact thing that this to me is like the biggest thing is if you can split it into these four and then you summarize it up into there so that is the story form for the holdovers fantastic if you want to, I would definitely, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out and then come in here into subtext and you can follow along and see what happens in each act, what that, this whole act progression was predicted just by virtue of everything that's in here. That's the super cool part. So if you're trying to write your own version of it, you want to make sure, okay, this is the arc that Paul should go on. And this is the arc that Angus goes on. This is everybody in the story. And then here's their relationship. Or it's like a lot of misunderstandings in the beginning, then the doing, chasing around the school, the escaping, going to see dad, and then at the end, learning everything that's actually really going on. It's like that turn there. I think that feels pretty good. All right, so that's it for the story form for the holdovers. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time.